Welcome to Rhino CFD Basics. In this video, we will show you how to set up, run, and visualize results for a simple case in Rhino CFD. The focus of this tutorial is to give a quick overview of Rhino CFD and enable users to be productive as soon as possible. There are other tutorial videos that go into aspects such as meshing and convergence in more depth. It is recommended to watch these. The first step is to create the domain. Click the Create Domain button, select the working directory, and select the menu option Core. A rectangular box has appeared around the object. This is the domain, and the flow will be modeled within this volume. The domain can be resized using the gumball. For this case, we need the domain to be smaller than the height of the ellipse. This is to make sure it can be modeled as 2D. Now we need to expand the domain in the X and the Y axis to make sure it has enough room to capture the interaction between the flow and the object. Next. We need to create an inlet and outlet so that the fluid can enter and exit the domain. This can be easily done by right-clicking on the main menu icon. You'll notice that we have the option to make any side of the domain a wall, an outlet, or an inlet. Due to the orientation of our object, we require the outlet and inlet to lie in the x-plane at the maximum and minimum values respectively. To do this, make x min flow equal yes and x max open equal yes. Next, click on settings next to x min and enter an inlet velocity. Enter one meters per second in the x direction and click OK until all menus are closed. The inlet and outlet will appear at either end of the domain. The inlet will have an arrow pointing in the direction of the flow, and we can see here it is pointing towards the ellipse. If you want to access these options again, you can either re-enter the domain faces menu, or double-click on either object and click Attributes. Next, we can set up the grid around the ellipse. The grid essentially subdivides the domain into a lot of small control volumes in which the Navier-Stokes equations are evaluated. To view the automatically generated grid, click on the grid icon and rotate the object to see the changes in grid view. As we have made the ellipse larger than the domain, the grid is automatically set to 2D, which means only one cell in the z-axis, as can be seen here. To change the number of cells in the x and y axis, double-click on the grid to bring up the auto-meshing dialog. Then use the slider to make the grid finer or coarser. The more cells you have, the more likely geometry attributes are to be picked up but the longer the simulation will take. Finally, we need to specify which fluid is acting in the domain and set the number of iterations. To do this, bring up the main menu and click on properties. The default fluid is air, which is fine for this simulation. However, a host of other materials can be used. For example, we have the option of using carbon dioxide. Alternatively, we also have the option of using water as the domain material. Next, click on Numerics. The default setting is 1000 iterations, which is the number of times the calculations within each cell will be completed. This is a good default minimum. We should also have a look at the relaxation parameters. These controls are used to ensure the simulation converges correctly. 
Rhino CFD has automatic convergence wizard switched on by default. You simply need to adjust the reference velocity and the reference length. However, it is possible to set relaxation manually, which might lead to faster simulations. Check our video on convergence for more information. We are now ready to run the simulation. Close all windows and click Run Solver. Click Run. As this is a simple model, it ran quickly. An average model might take somewhere from a few minutes to a few hours. After the simulation ends, a summary page is opened to display convergence information. In this run, none of the convergence warnings were triggered, so we can proceed to view the results. For more information, check our video on convergence. We can now view the results. Click on Load Results. A box with variables such as pressure, density, and velocity will appear, along with the cut point. The cut point can be rotated and moved around. As expected, there is a small region of low velocity at the leading edge, where the flow is being stopped by the ellipse. Inspecting the rest of the flow field, there is another larger area of low velocity in the wake of the ellipse, which is also to be expected. Try loading vectors to see the direction of the flow. You can also create streamlines and isosurfaces from the other results panel tab. Thank you for watching this Rhino CFD basics video. If you have any trouble, please visit www.rhinocfd.com.